You are not gonna believe this. It is freezing here in Australia. Welcome to my channel. Today, I'll be tackling another problem from HackerRank series of questions. Let's see what this one is. If you have been following my series of HackerRank solutions, you will know that I have the problem statement on the left-hand side of my screen, and I have got a Jupyter Notebook on the right-hand side, which will help me teach you how I solve these problems. But this one today is called set dot discard dot remove and dot pops. All right. So if you have been following my series of hacker rank solutions, you will know that I will have the hacker rank problem on the left and I will have a Jupyter notebook on the right hand side for me to be able to explain the problem and how I think about it. So let's see what the task is. But first, there are a couple of examples that hacker rank has provided for us. So it says dot remove an element, maybe like X or a banana or an apple or a car. So this operation removes element X from the set. So if you've got, if you've got a set with 10 numbers in it and you say remove number seven, it will remove it. If element does not exist, so if seven does not exist, it raises a key error. Let's have a quick look. So I will copy this example from here and I will just paste it straight into my Jupyter notebook. And you will see that we've got a set has got one, two, three, four, five, six. So if I say s dot remove number seven, it will say, okay. And then when I print s, you will see that number seven is gone. So that's easy. Can I run that again? I will run that again. And if, if I can remove number seven again, it will say, hey, 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 number seven does not exist. You have already removed it. In applications, this is a problem. If your application breaks down like that, your website will stop, your application will stop. You don't want to use remove unless you are sure it will not stop your application or you can use something different. So the next one is dot discard X. This operation also removes element X from the set. If element X does not exist, it does not raise a key error. So it doesn't, it doesn't break. Let's see. So let me run the first set again, because I want to go back to the original, run that. This time, say discard seven, it says, okay, I have done it. And if I print seven, you will see that, okay, six and eight and seven is gone. So can I run discard seven again? Let's see if it's going to give me an error. It did not give me an error. That is great because sometimes you don't want your application to stop working. So I will print S again. Yeah, seven is not there. I can run it again. The application is not unhappy. So that's discard. Now the last one is dot pop. The operations, this operation removes and returns an arbitrary element from the set. So remember, when we use pop, there is a bit of difference in how we use it. So what I will do, I will run the original set again because I want to go back to zero, run that. This time I will go pop, but can I say I want to pop seven? Let's try. Python says mm -mm, you cannot use any argument for the pop method. So you can't use seven. You can't use apple. You can't use banana. You simply say, Hey, pop something. What it will do. It, it just popped number one, which is the first element in the set. And if I show you S, you will see that number one does not exist anymore. And if I do it again, S dot pop, it will pop number two. And if I show you what it looks like, one and two are gone. A quick recap, dot remove will remove an element. If it's not there, it will be very, very, very unhappy and it will raise an error. Dot discard will remove and will not be unhappy if it doesn't exist. Dot pop removes and gives it to you because then you can use it. It's like in a basket of fruit. If somebody says, hey, can you give me a banana? In a basket of fruit, if somebody says, hey, remove the banana and remove will say, yep, there is a banana, I will remove it. And if there is no banana, it will give you a big error. It will stop. Discard will say, hey, there is no banana. It's okay, I don't care. I will just pass. But pop will give you the banana back. And if there are no elements to remove, it raises also a key error. So if I continue doing this and doing that, so three is gone, four is gone, five is gone, six is gone, seven is gone, eight, nine is gone. And the next one, the very last one, he says, hey, you've got an empty set and I can't pop anything from an empty set. So these are some things for us to keep in mind when we are tackling this problem. So what is the task? You have a non-empty set, S, so it is called S, and you have to execute N commands. So maybe 10 commands, which is pop, discard, remove, discard, remove, pop, pop, discard, remove, pop. 
given in end lines so the user will keep giving them to us. The commands will be pop, remove, and discard, I told you. Now, the input format is the first line contains integer n. So the user will tell me, hey, I've got 10 inputs for you. They will give me the set with those inputs. So let me go ahead and clean my Jupyter Notebook first. Now, I will copy those two lines, which is the default command from HackerRank, and I will run them. So n in the example will be 9. Let me put 9 down there. And the set is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 with a space. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Done. I have my n and I have my set. So I have completed these two. This third line contains integer n, the number of commands. So how many times the user will tell me pop, discard, remove, top, pop, discard, remove? Uh, 10 times. So let's accept a capital N as well. So that, that will also be the integer of the user input. That's how you write input. So let's run that. That is also going to be 10. Now, I will be receiving 10 commands from the user and they will tell me if they want to pop, if they want to remove, and if they want to remove, what are they going to remove? If they're going to discard, what are they going to discard? So let's see how I can run this. But because the user will keep giving me commands, let me make a for loop. I will use an underscore because I'm not going to use it in any shape or form, but I will be running this in the range of n, the capital N. So the number of times the user will be giving me commands. Okay, that's good. I need to get the command from the user. So let's say command equals input from input from the user. So now that I've accepted the user input, remember that the user input will be coming in two different parts. One will be the word for the command. It's going to be remove, pop, or discard, and then an actual number sometimes. Sometimes it will be just pop. So what I will do first is to understand that the command will have two parts, index zero, which will be the word, and index one, which will be the number. So keep that in your mind. Now, let's start with remove. So if your command, if the user command at index zero, I want to look at the word first, equals remove, we know that remove will not be happy if there is not a banana in the fruit basket. It will say, hey, I'm going to break this application. So let's make a try and accept structure so that we can capture that exception or that error. This will stop our application from breaking. So if you haven't seen my video on exceptions, the link is up the top right. But now what I will do, I will generate a try and accept structure. So if this is going to happen, all we need to do is s.remove and the command sitting at index one. But just remember that whatever is going to be sitting at index one is going to be an integer. So let's do that because we need a one on one match. And if that does not exist, which will give us a key error, all we need to do is pass it means that we are not allowing the application to break. We are saying, hey, if you see an error, go back up and continue. So that's what we are doing here. I will try to implement the same if command sitting at zero equals pop, because I know that when pop has got elements in the set still will work. But if there are not any elements left, according to this helpful material, it will give me a key error as well. So I will pretty much do the same thing. So I will say if you are successful, just perform a pop. Otherwise, if you get a if you get a key error, then just pass. Okay, now I have covered remove and pop. Discard is pretty easy. So elif command sitting at index zero equals discard. Then all you need to do is s discard integer of command, command sitting at number one. Based on the task, the output has to be print the sum of the elements of set S on a single line. So after you perform all of these actions, all we need to do is to sum up everything that is remaining in the set, add them up and print it on the screen. So that bit is pretty easy. What I need to do is just to print the sum of S. I guess the only thing that I missed was to split the input from the user. So that will be splitting the word and the number. So remove nine, 
uh, discard eight. So that will be necessary. So if I run that now, you will see that I will copy and paste or maybe just type them. Pop, remove nine, discard nine, discard eight, remove seven, pop, discard six, remove five, pop, discard five. So you can see that the printed output is number four, which is the desired output from HackerRank. So I think this should be okay. What I will do right now, I think I just need to copy that line and paste it here. And also I need to copy this for loop and the dependencies into here. Let's run the code and see if it is successful. This is just one set that says, congratulations, and that was successful. Before I hit the submit code button, and if you wanna thank me, share it with your friends, like the video and subscribe to my channel. So let's just submit the code and all the test cases are successful. And I think I should be getting some points. Yes, I just earned 10 points here. Thank you for watching and good luck.